Dear pilots and welcome to another video. I am Lalo Mijares and today I want to welcome you on board this Cirrus SR20. Today we're flying from uh, San Antonio International Airport into Monterey del Norte International. And today I want to cover and show you the specifications and operation of uh, the autopilot on this aircraft, which is a non-standard rare version of, autopi of an autopilot. And this aircraft is equipped with an Aztec 30 autopilot systems on its uh, avionics configuration 2.1. I want to talk about uh, the modes of the autopilot and how to operate it. Now, this autopilot is a two-axis autopilot that has a uh, lateral mode and a altitude holding mode. That's it. Oh. All right. First of all, I want to show you that the Cirrus has a usual spot for the autopilot here. For this system, it's not there. On the other hand, it is on the train coordinator. Huh, yeah, I know. That's a pretty weird place for an autopilot. So initially, we're gonna see this light, which is a uh, green green light over the, uh, the ready legion. And that light means that the autopilot is ready to engage and has passed all the required tests. So we want to look at that light before we engage any mode on the autopilot. And that light has to be green and on. Next, we have a knob here on the side which says push mode. And that knob, as we push it, is going to select the lateral mode for the autopilot. And we have four modes, or well, actually three, and the third has uh, two sub-modes, if we can say that. So first of all, we have a uh, turn command, which is specified as ST. Then we have a heading command, which is here HD. And then we have a track command. And for the track, we have a low sensitive and high sensitive. For the turn command, if, if, if we engage that on the first click, it will let us select a specific bank angle with the, with the knob. If you look at the attitude indicator, we're now on a zero bank condition. But if I do turn the knob to the right, see how that turn starts. And right now we have a shallow turn. But if I go further right, it will increase the bank. You can go steeper if you keep turning the knob. If you if you reset that, which in this autopilot is that way, I don't know why, but that's that's center, it will return to zero bank. And you can go to the left as well. The the uh, as you turn the uh, the knob, the more you turn, the steeper the bank it is. So if you leave uh, that mode like that, the aircraft will keep that bank and will continue to do 360 turns and so. so if I want to return to a zero bank condition, I'm going to set that on the approximate 2 o'clock position and that will reset my bank to zero. Alright? So that's how you operate the turn command. For the second mode, which is the heading mode, I'm going to use the mode selector again uh, by pushing it to select that mode. And with that, I, ca I can use uh, the heading box selector to turn the aircraft to a specific heading. So that's, that's pretty, pretty simple to use. If I turn left, the aircraft is going to go to that heading. And if I turn uh, the bug to the right, the aircraft is going to turn that way as well. This, this is pretty cool that the GPS heading mode selector over here. And usually the analog, analog channel for the heading on, on the autopilots is override by this function, which is the GPS as function. And that will tell the autopilot based on the GPS how to navigate. Uh, today, 
I have the instruction to proceed to Nula, and I'm having another different heading, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna reset that direct nula. So direct nula, activate it. Now we have it. We are in GPSS. I'm gonna select my desired track as 199, which is 199 right there. And I'm gonna push the GPSS button and see how the aircraft is gonna turn to the right to intercept and track the GPS. So it doesn't matter if I turn the core selector or the heading bug anywhere. The aircraft is gonna fly whatever I have on the GPS. And that's a pretty cool function. So let me reset that. And this area track 199, heading to course, that's it. So the pretty the pretty cool function of this is that I I, I don't I don't care about the wind correction here because the uh, the aircraft by itself is going to correct based on the GPS track. See that? So right now we're tracking 206. Maybe it's correcting a little bit. See that? The CDI is just a little bit to the right. And right now it's correcting to the left. So it's very precise. Very, very precise. So the, um, uh, the autopilot on the GPS mode, it's going to track the GPSS no matter what we have on the, on this, on the HSI and it's going to correct for the wind uh, automatically. And for the last command for the autopilot, which is the track mode, we have a low and high sensitive modes and we can, we can select that uh, pushing the knob. So it, that's low, that's high, and if I want to turn it low, uh, I got to go all the way there. You go to low. So let's, let, let's see how this works. Uh, I have the H HSI here, and I know that I am flying with the GPS as a source, as a navigation source. So right now, if, if I turn uh, the course, the CDI is, is not going to move because I'm using the GPS, and the autopilot is, gonna, is not going to do anything about it. But, if I select the CDI uh, to the BOR lock, and I'm using that frequency, uh, see how right now the CDI is, is, is on the left, and see how the aircraft is correcting to follow, not what I have on the GPS now, but what I have here on the instrument. So right now, the aircraft is gonna follow the commands based on the HSI. Not on the GPS, not on heading, okay? So on the low sensitive, it's gonna make slow corrections. On the high sensitive, uh, faster corrections, for example, for the localizer, you wanna use high, because it's more precise. This mode that we have available on this autopilot is the altitude mode, and that mode is pretty simple to use. So I'm, g I'm gonna use an example here. I'm currently at 8,140 feet. So I'm gonna descend to 8,000. And as I reach that altitude, I'm gonna use a button here on the side stick that says autopilot altitude hold. Let me descend to 8,000, which is gonna be almost there. And when I hit that 8,000, I will level up the aircraft and hit the button. So there we have 8,000, almost there. There we go. I'm gonna hit the altitude hold button and see what appeared here on the autopilot annunciator. The altitude mode is selected. And uh, by that blue light, I know that the altitude hold mode is engaged. If, if uh, for example, if I, if I, if I'm given an instruction by ATC to climb or descend, I'm gonna disengage the autopilot altitude hold with a click. See that light off? I'm gonna climb, and when I reach the required or requested altitude, I'm gonna select the um, altitude hold mode again. That's it. It's pretty simple to use. I cannot climb using vertical speed, I cannot descend using vertical speed, 
uh, I'm, I, I will need to do that manually and uh, just hold altitude with that autopilot altitude mode. Uh, the last control we have for the autopilot is the autopilot disconnect button, which is this one. And you do that by pressing on the middle, okay? This is the trim, which is left, right, down, up. And if I press on the middle, see that all the lights are gonna go off and the radio will flash. So that's autopilot off, you will hear a tone and the autopilot is going to disconnect and after some seconds it will stay um, steady green for the ready. That means you can engage now the autopilot again. I'm going to select the heading mode with GPSS and altitude hold again. And that's it. Okay dear pilots, so today we'll learn how to operate the STEC 30 autopilot system that has a dual axis. And for a quick review, uh, we'll learn how to operate all of the four modes, which is the uh, turn command, the heading command, and the low and high truck commands. Also, we learn how to operate the altitude hold mode. If you have any other questions on how to operate the systems, you can leave your comments below, and I will try to respond to them. As well, I want to remember you to follow me on Instagram, at Lalo Mijares. Also, subscribe to my channel for more of this kind of videos. I'll see you in the next episode. And remember, fly safe and happy landings.